the character of Aziz. Aziz's character runs parallel to the character of Tughlaq. He is a dhobi by profession, but he is a cunning schemer. He knows the ways of the world. He is a good manipulator of the schemes of the king. At the beginning of the play, we see him disguised as Vishnu Prasad, a Brahmin whose land has been confiscated by the government. He makes use of Tughlaq's impartial attitude towards his people. Tughlaq announces that all are equal before the law. Justice prevails and he gets his land back along with 500 silver dinars and a job in the administration. His act mocks at the administrative system of Tughlaq. He justifies his disguise as a Brahmin. The irony is strikingly brought out through comparison and contrast between Tughlaq and Aziz. If Tughlaq is an idealist, Aziz is an opportunist. Tughlaq is a visionary, whereas Aziz is a realist. Unlike Tughlaq, he is practical in his approach to life. Thereby, he provides an ironic parallel to Tughlaq. He defeats the lofty aims of Tughlaq by misusing them for his own ends. Being cruel and corrupt, he exposes the ills of Tughlaq's administration. If Tughlaq is a shrewd politician, Aziz is a skilled manipulator. After his first success, he thinks of making the maximum use of his position. He lures Azam by revealing his plans of making money on the way to Dawlatabad. While going to Dawlatabad, he extracts money from the people even for small favors. He torments a Hindu woman. He does not allow her to see her ailing son. He knows that her Brahminic soul will not complain against another Brahmin. This scene brings out his cruelty and callousness. Coincidentally, Tughlaq also is transformed into a bloodthirsty tyrant. Here, Aziz emerges as a foil to Tughlaq. Cornod ironically brings out the transformation in Tughlaq through the inhuman acts of Aziz. Like Tughlaq, he too makes use of religion for his personal gains. After reaching Dawlatabad, he succumbs to the temptation of copper currency and engages himself in making counterfeit money. But as was too much of competition in it, he goes to drought hit Doab and buys some land for farming. There, he makes use of the state subsidies. When discovered, runs away and joins the robbers. Then he joins the officers of the government in order to escape from the law. There, he exploits the common people in the name of law. He abuses Hindus and Hinduism for his personal gains. He speaks like an experienced politician. He mocks at politics and politicians, yet he believes that his future is in politics. Cornod blends humor with irony when he presents Aziz with Azam. Their conversation arouses laughter, but at the same time, it holds a mirror to the corrupt social system. His cruelty is reminiscent of Tughlaq's own. He kills Ghiyasuddin and dances without any dint of 
remorse. After killing him, he gets into his robes and asks Azam, I quote, How do I look? Hey, the great grandson of the Caliph, unquote. In the last scene, he appears before the dejected king in the guise of Ghiasuddin. Tughlaq and Barani bow to him. He is not shocked at the news of Azam's death. He comments on his death as though it is yet another routine incident. He confesses that he is a dhobi. He recalls his past without any sense of guilt. He is cunning enough in portraying himself as the most devout servant of the king. Every word he utters oozes irony at its best. The scene is a fine example of dramatic irony. Tughlaq has a reason to justify his crimes, but Aziz has none. And he does not need one. He is cruelty personified. His avarice knows no bounds. He does not fear the consequences even after getting caught by Tughlaq. He defends himself. Tughlaq appoints him as an officer under Khosrau Malik who is in charge of Deccan. Finally, Aziz emerges victorious as Tughlaq gets defeated by his disillusionment. Aziz represents all those who took advantage of Tughlaq's visionary schemes and fooled him.